Hi there, my name is Tom, and in this video I'll be demonstrating the capabilities of K6 Studio version 1.0. What you're about to see represents around 10 months worth of engineering effort by a team of passionate developers with a mandate to improve the test authoring experience in K6. We're very excited to bring Studio out of public preview and into general availability with this 1.0 release. Although we're making a big deal out of this particular release, rest assured that there's still plenty of functionality we'd like to bring to it. The project is very much still under active development. That also means it's a great time to get involved. Feel free to visit the GitHub repo, we'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback. So let's dive right in, starting with a million dollar question. What exactly is K6 Studio? Well, K6 Studio is an application developed by Grafana Labs that aims to simplify K6 script creation. It has a user interface designed to help visualize the scripting process, all the way through recording to execution and debugging. It provides a proxy recorder for capturing HTTP traffic, a script generator that can leverage rules to modify generated script code, and a validator able to display detailed HTTP request and response data seen by a K6 script when it's run. You can see it in action here, and I'll switch over to a live demonstration in a moment, but while this reel highlights the types of things we've added, I wanted to take the opportunity to talk about why we felt this was an important project for us to embark on. As anyone that's ever needed to automate HTTP will tell you, it can be rather tricky at times. Web servers can be really finicky when it comes to the format of HTTP requests sent to it. Even the smallest typo in some post data can result in unexpected responses. Making matters worse is the fact that there isn't anything in the HTTP spec that says a server must tell you, the client, exactly what the problem was. Other times, and this is quite common for websites, you'll find the HTTP conversation is riddled with dynamic values being sent back and forth, requiring you to extract them from responses and then use them in subsequent requests. As soon as this isn't done properly, you're again faced with unexpected responses. Fundamentally, we're talking about reverse engineering HTTP, and that's not always a walk in the park. But what makes it more manageable is having some means of easily viewing HTTP request and response data, or being able to record HTTP traffic and converting this into a script instead of writing code from scratch. The tools we built into K6 Studio have been designed to address these challenges, with the end goal being to lessen, and in some cases even outright remove, the need to write K6 JavaScript. Okay, let me now take you through a typical flow in K6 Studio, starting from, from the beginning, and we'll go through the recorder, the generator, and the validator. Starting off with the recorder, we'll hit this button to record a new flow. We'll enter in the starting URL of the site we want to navigate to and then hit start recording. That'll cause the browser to appear, in this case Chrome, and in the background we'll see K6 Studio, uh, the recorder picking up uh, the request that just happened when launching that initial page. So straight away the biggest difference to our existing uh, browser extension recorder um, we now have the ability to rename groups and define when exactly we want groups to appear in the script. So, so groups are a way of being able to describe actions that the user performs. and They'll also generate a time for how long it took to complete all of the requests within the group. So uh, let's rename that initial group to something more human readable. And now we can also uh, decide that, well, we'll want to create a new group here. We're about to perform another action. Let's call this select product. And then we'll perform the action in the browser. Again, we've got a bunch of requests appearing that took place during that uh, selecting of a product. Next, we'll do add to cart. And then finally, place order. Now, once we're happy with the recording, all we have to do is close the browser or hit the stop recording button, and that'll take us back into K6 Studio, where we now have a recording appear here. The list of requests here will contain 
absolutely everything that was recorded. But don't worry, though, you'll get an opportunity to filter out unwanted traffic when we create the test generator. For now, you might want to take a look at the recorded traffic, so we can select any request in this list and see both the request parameters as well as the response. Uh, depending on what kind of response it is, you might also be able to uh, preview it. That gives a different view for, of the data. In this case, it was some HTML, so we do our best to render that HTML. In the case of something like JSON, there's also a specific uh, view of uh, JSON data as well. The next logical step is to create a test generator. So let's hit that button. Uh, now we get the opportunity to filter out a host that we're not interested in. In this case, we we just want the traffic that went to our actual uh, demo site itself here. Hitting continue, we now have a reduced list that's only for those uh, for the requests to that endpoint or to that host. As well as that, we've got some more options available uh, at the top here. The first of which is uh, the script tab that just shows you the script representation of that list of requests. So this is a, a K6 script that you would be able to run straight away if you wanted to. Um, but chances are there's still some, some things that need to be done to the script to get it to do exactly what we want. We also have uh, the ability to modify the test options so the option subject is quite a core concept in a K6 script. It allows you to say how many virtual users you want to run, you know, should they ramp up over a period of time, how long should they stay at a particular uh, level of virtual users. Uh, those kinds of settings can be defined uh, here. You can also set thresholds. So maybe we want to ensure that our response times uh, remain below a certain value in this test, otherwise that threshold would be considered to have failed. Um, so we can just define that uh, through this UI instead of having to write the actual code for it. So again, you'll see the, the code has appeared in this script that updates in real time as you make changes to these various different settings. You can also set the think time, the delay between performing uh, uh, requests or, or groups in this case. So uh, that allows you to easily uh, adjust uh, some pretty common parameters that you might want to change. And we can also determine if we want to generate this load from different geographical locations, should be we uh, running this test in Grafana Cloud casings. The next tab here is for setting up test data. Uh, so we already have a data file here called session IDs that just contains a list of at various session IDs that we want to use in this test. So maybe we want to uh, make that available to this generator, in which case we just have to add that data file here. When it comes to using this data, for now we just have a single access method. We'll have more as time goes on, but for now each virtual user will attempt to grab a unique entry from that list of session IDs and use that in each iteration. And finally here, we just have that ability to modify the uh, hosts uh, list of you know, the ones we want to include in this test. In the bottom half of the screen, we have the ability to uh, view and edit test rules. So you'll see here, we already have one in here by default. It's a verification rule. All that's really going to do is to put in a check statement into the script, and that check will um, execute and determine whether or not we receive the expected status code and we're, we're comparing uh, the correct status code with what was in the recording. So if we don't get the recorded, uh, if we don't get the status codes that we saw in the recording, uh, that check will fail. So that's an easy way to um, gauge whether or not your script is doing what you expect it to be doing. If we go back to the list of rules, let's now add another one. So let's start with a parameterization rule that allow us to modify uh, request data. So instead of perhaps using these this hard-coded session ID, you'll see it in, exists in the URL here. Maybe we want to take that out and instead replace it with one of our uh, session IDs from the data file. 
um, we can do so by setting this target to URL. The value we want to modify is in the URL and we want to replace the actual text that we saw in that recording. So I'll just paste in the session ID from the recording there. You'll see we've got matches for it here. We haven't yet determined what to replace it with. So uh, now there's just simply no uh, session ID populated here at all. Uh, we can toggle this few original requests here to see you know, what was originally recorded and how the rule has uh, modified things. Uh, but because we haven't put anything in here yet, it's, it's just gotten rid of it entirely. So let's set this replace value uh, with data file. So we'll link up to our session ID's data file and say we want to replace it with the session ID value in there. So now we see the actual code that would uh, get generated uh, when we uh, apply this rule. Again, we can also see that in the script representation, if you now search for session ID, we should see where that happens. So that's what the resulting code looks like. Next up, let's take a look at the correlation rule. So that's going to be doing a similar sort of thing to parameterization, but it's also going to be able to extract a value from a response. And so in this case, go back, going back to our list of requests, uh, we know that we're selecting a particular product. If we look at this response here, we've got a list of product IDs. Maybe we want to make sure that we always select this first uh, product ID. And so in order to apply this rule, uh, we'll want to uh, specify where we want to extract the value from. So it's in the uh, response body of this request. And because we're dealing with JSON, we can select the JSON extractor here. Uh, the path we want to use in this case, you know, we're dealing with a JSON array. So to select the first ID uh, property of an, ob an object in this array, we'll, we'll just use this uh, JSON path here. We're just interested in the first match. Um, so we'll just set it to extract once. If you wanted to repeat the extraction, uh, then you would select this most recent match option instead. Now the value we want to uh, replace this with, usually you'll leave this by default. Uh, it'll just replace that value wherever it originally appeared in the script. Uh, sometimes you might want to filter it uh, to only make the replacement in particular places. Uh, but yeah, the default is, is that you typically want to replace it wherever that value appeared. So again, we can see that the rule matched on this particular request where we're performing the extraction. Then further down, we should see where uh, that correlated value is being used. You can see it here. There was a product IDs property in the URL that's now being replaced with this correlation vars object that contains uh, the value that we extracted. It appears in quite a lot of places. So right away, this this rule has already uh, made quite a quite an impact on uh, the uh, script that would be uh, generated from uh, this generator. Let's add another rule here. Uh, there's also a custom code rule that does allow you to place arbitrary co uh, code into your script um, at particular placements in the script. So let's say you want to verify that the order uh, was placed successfully. In this case, um, the uh, checkout request is this one here. Uh, if I go back to the list of requests, it's this post request here. That's when we're um, making our uh, order. Uh, we should, as a result of making that order, receive an order ID back. So maybe we just want to uh, ensure that the, J, uh, the JSON that we get back contains this order ID property. And if that's the case, maybe we'll print out a message that says successfully placed order with ID then just enter that order ID value. All right, that's it. Now, once you're happy with the rules that you've created, you can attempt to run this script. Uh, so there's two ways of doing that. Either you uh, select the validate script option here, or you first export the script. 
Doing so causes it to appear in this list over here, and selecting it brings the um, brings up the validator view here, where you can click to validate the script. So uh, K6 is bundled with K6 Studio, so uh, this is now you know showing you what it looks like to run uh, the K6 script. Um, an immediate difference that you'll find when comparing this to running K6 from the command line is well got that same list of requests appearing as you saw when selecting a recording and we can inspect these requests as if it were a recording as well. So we have the ability to um, gain access to quite a lot of information that would typically be challenging to find. You would have to put console log statements throughout your script code uh, in order to, to do this kind of debugging and uh, that meant quite a lot of uh, boilerplate code being added to your script. Now you can just run this through the validator uh, to get the necessary information out. As well as that, we have tabs for showing any logs produced by the execution of the script, as well as the outcome of any checks that were defined in it as well. So that covers the main functionality in Grafana Cloud K6 when it comes to recording, generating, and validating your scripts. The last thing I'll show you is something that was added in the 1.0 release, and that is the ability to run this script in Grafana Cloud. So once you've authenticated to the cloud, it involves a couple of steps to do that, um, it becomes a single click button to upload this test and run it in Grafana Cloud K6. Simple as that. So that pretty much sums up this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you liked what you saw. Um, we still, like I said earlier, we still have a lot of uh, plans for K6 Studio moving forward. As mentioned in the blog post, one of the next things uh, to arrive will be the ability to record K6 browser scripts. I'm very excited about that. Uh, it'll make it much easier to get started with K6 browser. And so, yeah. We hope you'll like it. That's all for now, and thank you for watching.